Today on the Shape It Up Over 40 podcast, we are talking about how to run and not look stupid. How would it feel to lose 40 pounds, even when you're over 40? You are a smart woman, you know you need to move more and eat less, but why don't you do it? Or maybe you think you are doing all the things and still not seeing the results you want. If this is the case, you are in the right place. Welcome to the Shape It Up Over 40 podcast. I'm your host, Nicole Simone, and I help women over 40 lose weight for the last time. This podcast will teach you all about fitness, nutrition, and most importantly, your mindset. Plus, we have some special guests stop by to share their stories. Now on to today's show. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Shape It Up Over 40 podcast. Today, I'm talking about how to run and not look stupid. There are a lot of people that come to me and they want to start running. A lot of them want to do 5Ks and just to get started on, you know, kind of accomplishing that goal that they set out for themselves. I know because I was a late bloomer when it came to running, I felt very awkward and very um, stupid when I started running. And I feel like there's a lot of people that can relate to that. I didn't officially start running until I was probably 29 and I grew up in the ballet world so growing up as a ballerina you you just didn't run especially in the studio that I grew up in I never really knew why we weren't allowed to run we were really never allowed to like ask or at least I felt like I was never allowed to ask or be curious like in the ballet world you were just told that that was what it was and you just accepted it that like that was law so now that I'm older and I have an understanding of body mechanics from my physical therapy background and being a personal trainer I really believe that they didn't want us running because we would injure our knees Now, mind you, if you are familiar with ballerinas, they tend to walk with their toes out. So you can always spot a dancer because we walk like ducks. (laughs) And it took me a long time to kind of change that. I know back in the day when I was dancing professionally, I used to have such horrible knee pain because I walked like like a duck all the time. And um, now that I know, you know, the body mechanics and everything, I can see where that would happen because of the way I'm walking. And I did correct it and I don't have as many knee problems as I did. I never really ran like in the traditional sense of what I think most people think of running now. Yes, when I was a kid, I played outside and I ran around in that sense. I ran in gym class, much to my dismay, because I did not want to (laughs) run. But I never really did like traditional running. So when I did decide that I wanted to start running, I looked pretty darn funny. I would run on the balls of my feet with my feet pointed out, hopping along on the treadmill. I distinctly remember the first time I did run on a treadmill. Again, remember I was like 29, so I was running on a treadmill when I was working in physical therapy. It was like my lunch break or something. And um, one of the people I worked with, they were making fun of me, like in in a loving way, but they were making fun of me of how I ran on the treadmill and that I looked like I was prancing on the treadmill. And so running like this on my toes with my feet pointed out and hopping along, I really developed some knee pain, shin splints, and pain in my Achilles tendons. So not wanting to deal with the aftermath of my prancing about on the treadmill, I forced myself to run with my head steady, heel toe strike, and feet facing forward. So now I no longer look like a duck running. I do get comments that I'm very upright, (laughs) but I don't run like a duck. And I don't look like I have cement shoes on banging on the treadmill because that was another thing like when I first started to try to run properly, I felt like my feet were slapping the treadmill the whole time. And eventually I got it. So, and I kind of pushed past the thought, like, I don't care what I look like. I just wanted to be able to run and run correctly. So eventually I obviously did get it and it all came together. I never really claimed to be a runner. I've done a few 5Ks in the past, but Um, I never really considered myself a runner until 2016 when I was asked to do a 10K Disney princess run. And I was very nervous at the time, not nervous, but I was like, oh, how am I going to fit this in? Because even though it's a 10K, um, you still need to train for it. You still need to fit in the time to, you know, get those miles in. 
Um, but I'm so glad I did. And I actually had a lot of foot issues when I was training for that. Um, I have plantar fasciitis from ballet dancing uh, and some knee issues, again, from dancing. But um, so it was so much fun to go through that process, though, and kind of push past the the obstacles that I had had. And it was so worth it at the end. I know I had Heather um, on the podcast and she was talking about her Disney run experience. Um, if you haven't listened to the episode, go back and listen to that. But it was such a good experience. The Disney princess run, it was so much fun. It was so, um, it was just such an accomplishment, I think for finishing a 10 K. And actually when I finished the 10 K, I was like, Hmm, I could have done, you know, the next step up. Um, so that was pleasant. And I do think that at some point I want to do that again, uh, going for the next level up, not just the 10K. So through the process of doing the 10K Disney Princess Run, I want to give you some tips on how to run and not look stupid, or at least not feel stupid. <laughs> so tip number one is start off with a slow run or a fast walk, however you want to look at it. Some people, I've actually had a client who was able to walk at 4.8 miles per hour on the treadmill. Now for me, that's a slight jog, that's a run. <laughs> um, and she wasn't very tall either, so to me that was amazing that she could walk that fast. But So start off with a slow run, something where your feet are just leaving the, the ground, right? Then tip number two is think about rolling through the foot. You wanna go heel roll through and push off with your toes. So you're not slamming your heels on the ground and you're not up on your toes the whole time. So tip number three is wear comfortable clothes and sneakers. You wanna be comfortable in what you're wearing. You wanna be able to feel like you're able to move and not feel weighed down by your clothes. Number four, go incognito. So if you're running outside or even in the gym, you can put a hat on, you can put your sunglasses on, put your hoodie up if you wanna block out other people from your peripheral vision. You can put that earbuds in. They are a great way. If people can see your earbuds, usually they don't bug you or bother you <laughs> while you're running or doing your workouts. Um, just be aware, you know, if you are outside, be aware of the volume of your earbuds. You want to make sure that you know what's going on around you. But I say go incognito. If you can cover up and just kind of put those blinders on and do what you have to do, go for it. Number five is practice in the privacy of your own home. If you own a treadmill, get on it, practice there. If um, you don't own a treadmill, you can always run in your backyard or run up and down your street, depending on where you live, that kind of thing. But just start practicing. You could even like jog in place or run back and forth into in your living area just to kind of get the feel of it. Number six, most importantly, do not give up. You are going to feel very uncomfortable when you start this very 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 uncomfortable things are going to be moving things are going to be jumping or moving up and down you're going to feel very awkward you're going to feel like why am i bothering to do this you're going to be sweaty you know just expect it expect to be uncomfortable <laughs> you it will get easier as you go on it's like anything else in life the more you practice the more, the more comfortable it'll become Number seven, and this may be very, very challenging to do, but don't worry about what other people are thinking about you because really you don't know what they are thinking, what they are actually thinking. This is one of the biggest things when clients come to me, they're so nervous about what other people are thinking about them, whether they're in the gym, whether they're running outside, whether they're doing a workout in the park, whatever, or whether they started a, a you know new way of eating. Stop worrying about what everybody else is thinking. I love the saying, um, what people are thinking is none of your business. I may have misquoted that, but that's pretty much the gist. <laughs> You don't know what people are thinking. They could be admiring you for getting out and running, or they could be thinking about what's for dinner. You just don't know. So don't let it get in your head that other people are judging you or anything like that. You do you and go after your goals. As far as how to run and not look stupid while you're running, it really is all in your mind. 
you know, when we were babies, we first learned to walk and you fell down a lot. You may not remember, but you fell down a lot and you pulled yourself up each time. If you didn't do that, you'd be still on the floor crawling around, right? Or scooting, scooting your butt. Could you imagine that? Women, <laughs> 40 years old, just scooting around. It's not happening. You pulled yourself up. You learned how to walk. Eventually, you learn how to run. So keep at it. You're going to experience a learning curve. As you start to run, just do it and you will get better. Just try to improve every day, each time, even if it's just like a half a step. That's all you have to do. Our bodies were meant to move. And if you are taking on running, go for it. If you can run better than Phoebe from Friends, you are doing okay. <laughs> and if you have no idea what I'm talking about, you need to go check out Friends, which was an awesome show. I don't know when it was on, but it was on forever. But um, if you go to the show notes, I'm going to have a link there and you can see how Phoebe runs. All right, so that is it for today. I hope this was helpful and just go out and see what you can do. All right, I will talk to you soon. Hey, if you're loving this podcast, I want to hear from you. Head over to the Apple podcast and scroll all the way down at the bottom of the Shape It Up Over 40 podcast. Please write a review. I can't wait to see what you write. Once you're done with your review, head over to shapeitupfitness.com and find out how you can get started on losing the weight for the last time. 